Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and this is Design Dive, my game design series as part of AI and Games. In my first two videos, I've looked at two of the most critically acclaimed and exciting first-person shooters of recent years, Respawn Entertainment's Titanfall 2 and id Software's reboot of Doom. But in this video, I'm going to talk about a game that, well, wasn't very good. A game that faced a long and troubled development that ultimately failed to live up to the hype it generated and the franchise it's associated with. Gearbox's 2013 release, Aliens Colonial Marines. It's hard not to make comment on Colonial Marines when your YouTube channel is largely famous for celebrating the AI and game design of Creative Assembly's Alien Isolation. Two games released within 18 months of one another that were treated quite differently by the gaming press and games culture at large. Although in many respects, they are quite different games, Colonial Marines being an action-driven first-person shooter while Isolation is a first-person horror and survival game. But they share a commonality in that they aim to expand the mythology of the Alien franchise, with Isolation bridging between the 1979 movie Alien and the 1986 sequel Aliens, while Colonial Marines does the same thing for Aliens and 1992's Alien 3. Both sought to invest themselves in the aesthetic, the energy and the story of their respective forebearers and then enrich them to answer unresolved questions or explore untapped character arcs. Now I will need to talk briefly about Colonial Marine's troubled development, but my issue with its design isn't one that's exclusive to that game. Aliens Colonial Marines is but the latest and not well executed example of an issue that plagues almost every video game adaptation of the Alien franchise. Video games have historically embraced James Cameron's Aliens as the linchpin of their design, not just in adaptations of the actual franchise, but throughout gaming culture. But after 20 years of games inspired from it, I genuinely believe this is fundamentally flawed, but one that made sense given the technology and tools available when that consensus was reached. So in this video, I want to look at how that consensus was formed, the impracticalities of making alien-inspired games and how Colonial Marines failed to live up to the expectations that we secretly hold for it. But in order to do that, I need to go back to the foundational structures of how we consider contemporary video games, and this is where the root of the problem lies. Games are fundamentally a construct through which we reward the human ideal of play. To experiment with ideas or concepts within a defined set of rules that either reward us for excelling within their confines or punishing us for failing to understand them. These rules can range from social interactions to feats of physical or mental faculties. Now, video games have the added pressures of expressing these rules and systems within a virtual environment and a limited set of interactions and expressions. Players progress by understanding and respecting the rules of the systems in play and then master the game mechanics to the point you excel within that system. The systems we build often vary, such as jumping on Goombas in Super Mario Bros, chomping up power pills and ghosts in Ms. Pac-Man, ripping your way through the hordes of hell and doom, or just figuring out how the hell to ring that first bell in Dark Souls. Each of these systems express the rewards and punishment in different ways, and also have different rates at which that reward is delivered. Mario quickly introduces the core systems through subtle level design and frequently rewards the player for doing things right. Meanwhile, Dark Souls is less forthcoming and forces the player to truly earn that reward, often by using death as means for the player to learn aspects of its systems that are otherwise not expressly communicated. Now, all four games I mentioned here in some fashion or another utilize the same core rule as part of their design, enemy non-player characters or NPCs. Each game is built to reward the player for destroying enemy opponents. This rule, as it were, was largely established following the popularity of games such as Space Invaders in the early days of video games in 1970s arcades. By replacing the need for human opponents with large numbers of disposable but still challenging NPCs, it provides a scalable and easy method of engaging with players that could be repeated and reinforced. A zero-sum game in which players must eliminate all that face them or lose as they succumb to the enemy. So it's perhaps not surprising, given the predilection towards shooting aliens shown in Space Invaders, Galaxian, Galaga and the like, 
that games inspired by the Alien franchise would eventually come to the fore. It didn't take long for games based on the Alien franchise to appear on home video game systems, with Ridley Scott's Alien being adapted into two games in 1982 and 1984 respectively. The 1982 release was for all intents and purposes a Pac-Man clone, but it didn't give that satisfaction of blowing the xenomorphs off the face of the earth. Rather, you made them change colour and chase them around and ignore the fact there's several of them rather than there's just one, which is kind of a big part of the movie, but anyway. While you could argue that this is all at an early stage in video game development, such that you can't do an awful lot with the story provided by the movie, the 1984 release tried to do something more ambitious as a strategy adventure game where the player needs to manage the crew of the Nostromo and survive the Xenomorph's attack. Unsurprisingly, things changed with the release of James Cameron's 1986 movie Aliens, with an actual video game adaptation of the movie published by Activision in 1986 on the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, Apple II and Amstrad CPC that placed a large emphasis on shooting as many of the aliens as you can. Not that I would know, I actually owned the game on the Amstrad but never got a chance to kill any of the f***ing things given the first level where you tried to land the dropship was so f***ing stupidly hard that poor 4 year old gamer Tommy couldn't even land the f***ing thing. And so began a long history of adaptations of the Alien franchise with a predilection towards shooting as many xenomorphs as we can with plasma rifles and smart guns, often to the point that the games themselves take extreme creative liberties in order to make it work as a video game, and adhere to that rewarding game loop we get from shooting aliens in the face. This results in the likes of Konami's 1990 shoot 'em up where xenomorphs can now be snakes or bats or just flat out mental flying creatures the Super Nintendo Mega Drive and Game Boy versions of Alien 3, all of which seem to forget there's only one alien in the movie up until the last five minutes, spoiler alert, an alien trilogy on the Sega Saturn and PlayStation that acts as something of a mishmash of ideas from the first three movies that allow the players to shoot a bunch of facehuggers and xenomorphs. And then of course there are a bunch of other games in which the Alien and Predator franchises are mashed together. But a lot of things are lost along the way until the technology can catch up with the original vision, such as the gradual improvement of environment and character art, lighting and rendering technology, foley and music and of course more intelligent and responsive alien NPCs. Alien Trilogy is arguably the first of these games that can truly capture the unsettling atmosphere of LV-426 and the panic in seeing an alien come rushing towards you. This helps not only make the player feel less comfortable in their surroundings, but ultimately become rather scared or freaked out as they begin to feel like they're trapped inside the whale in yutani Station. The reward system governed by killing enemies as mentioned before should really be in a position where you don't want the player to feel dominant, but also be grateful for every kill they pull off successfully. For me personally, this came to the fore courtesy of Rebellion's Aliens vs Predator first person shooter released in 2000 on the PC, with the pace and power of the Xenomorphs being truly terrifying. Well until you get to play as them yourself or just ghost everyone as a predator, which inverted that dynamic such that you're now the hunter rather than the hunted. But looking back on it all, something's still missing. We've really taken to the zero sum competitive aspect of the 1986 movie. Even 1997's Alien Resurrection, which had an adaptation on PlayStation in 2000 if you're a bit of a masochist, but it strikes me that we've gone off track. None of these games have ever truly captured the spirit of their original film. Many adaptations have borrowed parts of it, and other series such as Halo, Doom and Half-Life have stolen from it outright, but nothing has aimed to recapture the feel of the movie in a way that Alien Isolation did. Isolation embraces the horror tropes of its source material, one in which the player survives insurmountable odds, constantly looking over their shoulder for this invincible creature determined to kill them. So with this in mind, I want to go back and pay attention to the details in Aliens, how it actually operates as a movie. Given from a design perspective, I feel there is plenty of untapped potential. Aliens is still one of the greatest action movies ever made and also one of the most ambitious films of its kind, given it essentially takes a horror movie and translates it into a terror fueled action flick. The original movie is small, insular, intimate even, while Aliens is bombastic, it's loud, it's grander in scale, but it keeps true to the pace and mood of the original. The pacing of the film is slow and takes time to build towards the horrors that await inside the colony of Hadley's Hope. 
Even once the gunfire starts, the aliens themselves do not take up a tremendous amount of the screen time afterwards, with a lot of the second half of the movie focused on fortification, finding a way off the planet, and resolving environmental and personal conflicts. Aliens is the story of how the Marines ultimately lose a war of attrition. It's hard to walk away from the movie feeling that the Marines come off as victors. Sure, they shoot a bunch of aliens, smash one up using a power loader, and then walk away with their backs to a nuclear explosion, but it's a story of hubris, of unrealistic expectations, and of fighting for survival. It's no secret that James Cameron took inspiration from the American forces in the Vietnam War, that of a technologically superior force losing ground and momentum in a hostile and unknown environment, to the point that the film has since been critiqued by many as a condemnation of the Vietnam conflict and America's involvement within it. But we typically take the movie at face value. We focus on the shotguns to the face, plasma rifles, flamethrowers, grenade launchers, queens, facehuggers, and smacking giant aliens with a cyber forklift. Get away from her, you bitch! We forget the most nail-biting parts of the film. The tension as we watch the motion tracker fill with signals, watching the ammo counter shrink on the turrets as the aliens stress test the marines' defences. The fear of the unknown, the struggle to hold a defensive line, these are the sorts of things that the likes of Left 4 Dead, XCOM, Gears of War's Horde mode and even Call of Duty's Zombies have capitalised upon to create unique and exciting gameplay experiences. Heck, Left 4 Dead invented director AI techniques that have since been adopted in a variety of PvE games. This in turn highlights the problem. Why hasn't the Alien franchise exploited the sense of unease and unrelenting momentum towards your own destruction? and fashion it as the core linchpin of the game's design. Six. It can't be, that's inside the room. It's reading right, man, look! Well, you're not reading it right. Colonial Marines is sadly just another in a long list of games that fails to grasp what makes the original movie so great. Excluding the Alien vs Predator games, when was the last game that made the player feel out of place and against the odds? The frustration left by Colonial Marines is multifaceted. Given the game did not have a smooth development process, the pre-release marketing was disingenuous at best, but ultimately it feels like a Call of Duty clone. Tight corridors, cover-based shooting against human enemies, and forward-moving gameplay. But looking at the game, past its flaws, it's still the same old thing. Shotguns to the face, plasma rifles, flamethrowers, grenade launchers, queens, facehuggers, and smacking giant aliens with a cyber forklift. What's really biting at us collectively as an audience is that only now can we truly replicate the sensation of the 1986 movie. Alien Isolation proved that can happen, and while not everyone is a fan of it, it's hard to ignore not only its design ambitions, but also how faithfully it replicates many areas of its source material. I could easily turn this video into an assassination of the enemy AI and design choices of Colonial Marines. The Xenomorphs are rigid and limited in their movement, often reliant on suicidal charges towards the player, your unlimited weapon arsenal results in the aliens being more of a frustration than in any way terrifying, jump scares are pre-written with aliens popping out of not so random vents, the pathfinding of the aliens is one of the most apparent failures of the game, given they often fail to utilise walls in the pathfinding system, to the point I genuinely believe it does not permit them to freely wall run an attack unless they're really close to the player or standing on the ground. What's all the more frustrating about the pathfinding system is that the 2010 Alien vs Predator actually does a better job of this core aspect of the gameplay. Not to mention the companion AI really pulls you out of the experience. They fail to provide any real support, but perhaps most importantly, break the illusion and terror of the core game given they never actually die and are merely injured by alien attacks. Despite my frustrations, this is not the focus of this video. What I want to challenge is the perception of how alien games should work. We don't need another Call of Duty clone, or more specifically, a by the number shooter that utilised the xenomorph creature. We need a game that captures the fear, the trepidation, the need to sit to hold, to wait as the aliens rip their way through our defences, looking for a way in, looking for a gap. To have interesting and aggressive aliens that hunt, that attack, that pick off our weakest allies, all the while we're hoping to find a way out. It's these problems that simply add salt to the wound that Colonial Marines left, given it actually explores one or two of these ideas in ways that are either haphazardly executed or limited by the DLC model they introduced. The campaign mission in the sewers has players not only trying to escape the larger raven alien, but also avoid the exploding acidic ones. 
An interesting idea if it went for the fact it all looks a little bit silly in execution. The core game also has two player versus player game modes, survival and escape, that actually embrace some of these ideas, but tie them to a strict player count, have but a handful of maps, and you can't even play them with bots. The worst part is that arguably the one part of the game that works, the bug hunt game mode, actually takes some of what I'm saying into consideration. You fight off against waves of xenomorphs in increasingly more drastic situations. It is, in context of the larger game, probably the best part of the package but it's paid DLC for a game that seldom anyone will pay for, much less its add-ons. Not to mention the difficulty in then finding someone to play it online with. In closing, James Cameron's Aliens has yet to be given the respect it deserves within video games, despite how much of the modern FPS genre has stolen from the original movie, to the point that almost everything seems like it's parroting it. I'm confident there is still mileage left in the original concept. But it's important to remember, as I wrap up, that while I have been critical of many a game throughout this piece, these are the products of many a developer's long hours and hard work. While I may have my issues with the outcome, it's important that we recognise that we can be critical of video games in their design and final release, but never to the point that it's detrimental to the personal lives of those responsible for making them. It's important that we can express our opinions in a grounded and intelligent fashion, to the point that we can hopefully have some civil discourse on the issues we're exploring. It's important that we never lose sight of that fact. It is just a video game after all. Face when you woke up? Are you sure you're okay? It was already dead, O'Neill. I'm fine. All right, I pulled it off when I woke up, so nothing's gonna happen to me. It's just good to see some familiar faces. Ah, oh, right, yeesh. That does it. No more alien games for a while. I've played enough alien games in the build-up to this video to last me a lifetime, but despite all of that, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. What do you think of the state of aliens-based games? Sing their praises or condemn them down in the comments. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe to AI and Games for not just these game design focused critiques, but also case studies looking at AI applications and research in video games, tutorials, AI 101s, and much more. This series, like all my other videos, is made thanks to the support of my sponsors on Patreon.com. AI and Games is a crowdfunded show, and it's these good people that are on screen right now who help this continue to be a reality. In return, Patreon backers get access to the AI and Games Discord server, early access to new content, a monthly newsletter, patron exclusive videos, have access to my video topic list, easter eggs, bloopers, can pitch new videos for me to make, and most importantly right now, get to vote on the next video. With that in mind, we have three design dive topics, and jeez, uh, I don't even think this is a fair fight. Borderlands 2. Hotline Miami, and I'll genuinely be surprised if it isn't this one, Dark Souls. Devote, head to the link in the description, or head to the AI and Games Patreon page. Thanks once again for watching this Design Dive video, and I'll see you again soon.